Hi everybody, it's Jason in Austria. I've been asked by quite a few friends if I would give a review on the differences between the 328 that I'm driving today, the Testarossa, and the 550. Actually, this is a review I really wanted myself when I was looking for my cars, because I wanted to know how do they compare, particularly on mountain roads uh, like this one here where I live. And of course, I couldn't find the content. I'm, I'm in a pretty unique spot. So I'm gonna try to do that today or in the next couple days. If you have any other questions yourself, if you're looking to buy a classic, please leave your thoughts in the comments below and I will try to come back to you, of course. So what is the biggest difference between the Testarossa, the 328 and the 550? In my opinion, it comes down to the lightness of the car. After getting out of the Testarossa and hopping in the 328, it almost felt like the 328 had no wheels on it. It's incredible how light the steering is, how agile the car agile the car is. You can really throw it around. The Testarossa is absolutely not that. Although they're both very similar that they're unassisted steering, unassisted brakes. So in, in a lot of sense, they're quite similar. The 328 literally feels like there's no weight behind the car whatsoever. Of course, the Testarossa is almost 400 kilograms heavier than this car, as is the Marinello. So it's really not a fair comparison. But the 328 excels at its agility. You can throw it into corners. You literally feel everything through the steering wheel still, but you can drive it with one hand. And that's absolutely not the case with the Testarossa. The 550, of course, has power steering. It's very synthetic and it's very much a filtered feeling versus the, the uh, three cars. And if you're looking for that or if you don't mind that, that's obviously perfect because the car is very, very uh, competent, obviously, in handling any, any roads you want. It doesn't feel like a GT car, it feels like a sports car. But overall, the, the 328 does feel more like a sports car like it is. The Testarossa is actually a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing because although it's considered a GT car, I'm very amazed at how easy it is to, to throw the car around. Of course, you need you need two hands when you're driving the car and it is more work to drive it. But it's very, very competent on mountain roads. Part of it is, I think, because of the weight. Obviously, the car feels very, very planted uh, compared to the 328, which feels super light sometimes you're not sure if you're going to fly off the road because it is so light but that's my initial impressions of them if i think of all the different elements of the cars and the important ones for me of course the gearbox is one of them and i would say the winner in this is the 328 it has the best gearbox it's super easy to use it has to warm up just like any of the cars second gear actually works fairly well on the 328 as it does on the Testarossa not so much on the Marinello but moving through the gears through this gated uh, shifter on the 328 is absolutely the best experience clutch is quite light in comparison to the Testarossa and the pedal layout on the 328 is particularly good you can really heel toe this car rev match it perfectly I haven't actually figured that out or haven't got the pedals set up perfect, perfectly yet on the Testarossa. I'm still working on that and I think it'll get there. But out of the box, when I bought the 328, it's absolutely needs nothing. It's perfect. 550 is quite heavy in comparison. I never really appreciated the, uh, the gated shifter in it as much. It felt way notchier than the, uh, than the other two cars. And subsequently, it wasn't my favorite in that respect. All right, the 328, the cockpit. Getting into this car is a bit of a challenge. It is very low. So if you're not very flexible, you're going to have a hard time getting in and out of it. The A-pillar is relatively narrow compared to the Testarossa. Uh, and I find that if you're able to get your feet into the, uh, into the footwell and use the A-pillar to actually get into the car, you're able to do so without putting a lot of pressure and wear onto the driver's bolster. And that's because that's actually when they start to wear out. So you really try to put your bum into the seat without pressing onto the bolster. But overall, the 328 is really a driver's car. Gauge visibility is excellent for the primary gauges. The secondary gauges, of course, are right there. 
And the center console, of course, has all the main features and functions that you would expect. Most important one being, obviously, the gated shifter at a perfect height to be usable. Uh, when you look in the car, the footwell is very cramped and it's off to the right. So using it is a bit of an odd experience. And overall, if you're tall, uh, meaning if you're five foot nine, you're going to find you're going to have a challenge in this car because I'm literally have about an inch above my head right now. Uh, in the car, you feel like you're literally sitting right beside the passenger, uh, which is quite a cool experience. The car feels like it's actually wrapped around you. When you close the door in this car, it feels like you're in a tin can. It's very light. It's 1,200 kilograms. Compared to the Testarossa, it's a different world. Gauge visibility in the Testarossa is perfect, and overall, the car does feel compact and quite intimate, similar to the 328. Obviously, being a G car, it is uh, made to be slightly more comfortable, if you want to call it that. Uh, controls for all the major functions are also at your fingertips and in a logical spot. And, of course, the gear shift, the most important element here, is at approximately the same level as you would find on the 328. Uh, radio, if she had ever listened to one in a Testarossa, is here hidden underneath this little flap. And should you be the type of person to check your makeup while you're in a Testarossa, while you're the passenger, you have this vanity mirror here to the extreme uh, located here and that's what you can expect in a Testarossa. of owning a Testarossa, well, basically it's all classic cars. There's always going to be some little gremlin, something that might need attention. For example, my uh, odometer is running at three times the normal speed. It needs to be exchanged uh, when I put the car away for, for, uh, for its winter hibernation. And that's just some of the things that go along with owning classic cars. You never know uh, what's going to come next. On the 328, it'd be the window switches uh, sometimes are acting up. But if you're a 30 plus year old uh, car, I guess you can expect those things to happen. Uh, other pet peeves about the car, obviously the service on the 328, or sorry, on the Testarossa is, uh, is obviously high, uh, but you learn to, del to live with that kind of thing. Um, the steering weight on the car is, is high, but again, if you, if you uh, buy a car like this, you have to expect that kind of thing. If you don't want that, then buy a new car for all that, uh, for all that matters. things was done at the same time when you're talking about 14,000 euros. So 
this is the thing that most people don't realize when you get into the old exotic car standpoint that these things can be expensive to maintain and you just need to be prepared for that.